Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunk of Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off The Ball Network. In today's episode, I want to talk about what I think the Los Angeles Lakers should do as far as trades and transactions this offseason. And, you know, I also want to break down some of the reasons why I believe that they should possibly pursue a rebuilding situation. But before we get started with today's episode, if you guys are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on any other podcast streaming platform, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and give us a five star rating and a nice review on all podcast streaming platforms in our YouTube page. But without further ado, let's get started with today's episode because I think we got a good one here. You know, so uh, for the entirety of this offseason, we've been hearing a ton of reports from the Los Angeles Lakers, that being, you know, things revolving around LeBron James and Russell Westbrook, obviously, when it comes to, you know, just trades and, you know, drama and things of that nature. It's been a fairly noisy and busy offseason for the Los Angeles Lakers brand, to say the least. Right. And, you know, given the direction of the team, given the current state and fate of this team, You know, there's not a whole lot of positives and things to look forward to when it comes to the 2023 NBA season, when it comes to the Los Angeles Lakers for a number of reasons, right? You know, you're fresh off a season where you missed the play in tournament in the postseason entirely, finished the year as an 11th seed in the Western Conference. You know, LeBron James obviously showed a lot of frustration and, you know, disappointment last season. Anthony Davis shown regression when it comes to, you know, just his overall ability on the basketball floor all last season. And then Russell Westbrook, the anomaly of the entire situation, you know, him being, you know, a a fairly available asset for the majority of the year. But, you know, that being said, his presence wasn't a good one. You know, with him having double digit turnovers on a nightly basis, being a cancer in the locker room, not really buying into the system, having a lot of issues with the coaching staff and things of that nature. You know, it was just a really ugly year for the Los Angeles Lakers, to say the least. And quite frankly, you know, I think we're in a situation where Los Angeles, you know, they're very, very, very far away from contention, right? You know, even in the event that, you know, you possibly acquire a guy like Kyrie Irving in exchange for Russell Westbrook via trade and some draft compensation, you know, where does that genuinely put the Los Angeles Lakers amidst the rest of the teams in the Western Conference? And I think in my opinion, you know, they would probably be at best a six seed and that's at best. And this is going to bring me to my next point. With that being said, just given what the roster looks like, them having an aging LeBron James, Anthony Davis depreciating as an asset, Russell Westbrook, you know, on the final year of his contract and, you know, not really having much of a market or trade value. Also being surrounded by, you know, a young core that isn't all that promising. And on top of there, there being questions on a lot of shooting deficiencies around guys like Lonnie Walker, Kendrick Nunn, and, you know, what is Thomas Bryant going to look like and things of that nature. You know, I think it's quite clear that the Los Angeles Lakers need to pick a direction. And that direction needs to be a rebuilding situation. Because evidently, when you have minimal draft compensation, when you have, you know, low value assets on your team, when you have an aging LeBron James and a depreciating asset in Anthony Davis who barely shows up to work due to, you know, him being derailed with injuries, it's quite clear that the Los Angeles Lakers have very minimal options to be able to keep themselves as a formidable playoff team at that, let alone being an NBA contender and competing with teams like the Golden State Warriors, the Dallas Mavericks, Los Angeles Clippers, Minnesota Timberwolves, and so on. And in my opinion, like I mentioned, I think the Los Angeles Lakers need to go into a rebuilding situation for a number of reasons. First and foremost, kickstarting your rebuild with the assets that you have on the team right now, that being Thomas Bryant, Lonnie Walker, Juan Toscano Anderson, and some of the rest of the younger guys on the roster, Taylor Horton Tucker, Kendrick Nunn's of the world. You know, bringing in draft compensation and possibly some quality rotational players alongside those guys, you might be able to really start and build something from scratch here that could turn out to be promising in the near future. Because evidently, trying to throw in draft compensation 
and attempted to bring in a star player that would complete a trio next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis, or even trying to bring in some formidable quality rotational players and sticking them right next to Anthony Davis and LeBron James. With the current core that the Lakers have, you still would not be able to compete with some of those top tier teams in the Western Conference. So pursuing a LeBron James and Anthony Davis trade, and obviously, you know, if you can get Russell Westbrook off your books in exchange for some, possibly some draft picks or any type of, you know, valuable asset in return, it's a lot more of an ideal situation for the Los Angeles Lakers. And it, it, just based off the comments that we've been hearing from Jeannie Buss, you know, her talking about she doesn't want to make moves just for the sake of making moves and she wants to be able to mortgage her future. I think the best possible way to do that would be pursuing a LeBron James and Anthony Davis trade. Because hypothetically speaking, like I mentioned earlier in the episode, whether or not, you know, the Los Angeles Lakers were able to get a deal done with Kyrie Irving this season in exchange for Russell Westbrook and then having to give up draft compensation, you're really giving up a lot due to the fact that, you know, you have minimal draft picks for the remainder of this decade in exchange for a nutcase in Kyrie Irving, who typically is going to have his fair issues on and off the basketball court. He's going to be a distraction in the locker room. And just based on what we saw from Russell Westbrook this season, with him having some of those issues, but obviously Kyrie Irving being a better player productive wise, you know, you still don't want to have to deal with those issues, especially if it's not going to put you anywhere near the top four, top three of the Western Conference. And in my opinion, a Kyrie Irving trade does not do that with this current roster, which is why the Lakers need to try to get draft compensation and some quality young players and assets in general in return for a guy like LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Because quite frankly, LeBron James is going to continue to try to do everything in his power it is possible to try to put this Lakers unit in a position where they're going to try to contend for an NBA title. But the problem with that is there's no possible transactions or things that they can do in this current state that would allow them to be towards the top of the Western Conference. And obviously, you know, pursuing a LeBron James and Anthony Davis trade, being able to get that deal done, it obviously wouldn't be an easy one, right? We've seen stars like Donovan Mitchell and Kevin Durant, obviously, get put on the trade market. And, you know, they're having a tough time, those respected teams that are trading those assets away. I'm trying to get back equal value in exchange for those assets, right? And I think, you know, looking at LeBron James and Anthony Davis, you know, with LeBron having, you know, minimal years left of him being a top six, top seven player in the NBA and Anthony Davis, you know, just being derailed with injuries and showing a lot of regression on the basketball court, whether we're talking about offensively or defensively, it would be extremely tough to really try to get a deal done with those guys being included, let alone trying to get, you know, equal value. But I think it, in the Lakers best interest, it will be to pursue a trade whether it be separate or including both of those guys and trying to get back, you know, some decent compensation because it will give the Lakers a clear direction with their organization. And hypothetically speaking, it would be a lot easier to go into a rebuild than to try to continue to contend for an NBA title because there's just nothing the Los Angeles Lakers can do from that perspective. When you have guys like Russell Westbrook, who, who are making $47 million a year, and you know, has shown the inability to be able to space the floor out at anything above a 30% clip, not being able to shoot league average. On top of, you know, the turnovers and not being an adequate passer, having poor peripheral vision, not being a complimentary asset next to generally any star caliber player, at, at least at this stage of his career. And essentially the possibility of him being a locker room cancer also, you know, is gonna devalue his trade value overall. And I think with the fact that him firing his agent just shows the difficulties of dealing with Russell Westbrook in general. So for the Lakers to try to constantly pursue trades in exchange for, you know, top tier players in return, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get a Kyrie Irving for the price of a Russell Westbrook just entirely. You're going to have to throw in that draft compensation. And the Lakers obviously don't want to do that because Jeannie Buss understands whether she brings in Kyrie Irving or not, they're not going to be a formidable playoff team. And Kyrie Irving also still brings in a lot of those issues that Russell Westbrook obtained. And we know the Los Angeles Lakers just do not want to deal with those type of issues. So with that being said, I think the Los Angeles Lakers need to pursue a rebuilding situation just because they're a lot closer to a rebuild than they are to being contenders. And there's also, we have to consider that, you know, LeBron James is on the final year of his contract and he has the opportunity to sign for a two year, $97 million extension in August. But the probability of him signing that dotted line in August would be fairly low. And if the Los Angeles Lakers have another season where, you know, they're extremely underwhelming and possibly miss the playoffs entirely, or they're, you know, in a play-in category once again, 
there's a 50-50 probability that LeBron James doesn't return to this roster. And then at that point, you know, if LeBron James does find himself on a different team heading into the 2024 season, if you're the Los Angeles Lakers, you're definitely going to wish you would have been able to get some value out of LeBron James. Now, like I mentioned, it's going to be tough to get a deal done, but I'm sure being able to acquire any assets in exchange for LeBron James, given the current state of the Los Angeles Lakers, when you know you're not going to be able to compete with the top tier teams in the Western Conference and really being able to have any relevancy when it comes to, you know, just being a contender, it would be a lot better for them and more beneficial for the organization to try to get back some draft compensation. That way you're not just relying on that 2027 and 2029 pick in the near future. And you'll also be able to get some decent rotational players at worst, some really reliable young guys in exchange for LeBron James. And the same thing for Anthony Davis. But with that being said, hey, you guys let me know what y'all think about this here in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode with me here on the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on any other podcast streaming platform, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, turn on post notification, give us a five-star rating, and a nice review. But besides that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunk and Benny. You're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast, and we out. Praise God.